In the heart of the Islamic Golden Age, when science, philosophy, and culture flourished across the Muslim world, one man emerged as one of the greatest minds in history. His name was Abu Raihan Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Biruni, a scholar, philosopher, traveler, and scientist whose works would shape knowledge for centuries to come. Today, we uncover the extraordinary life and achievements of the man often called the first modern scientist. Al-Biruni was born in 973 CE in the city of Kath, near modern-day Kiva in Uzbekistan. From a young age, he displayed an insatiable curiosity. He studied mathematics, astronomy, philosophy, and natural sciences. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Biruni believed that knowledge should not only be preserved, but also constantly questioned, tested, and expanded. As a child, he had access to some of the greatest libraries of Central Asia. And by his teenage years, he was already conducting original research in astronomy and mathematics. But destiny had other plans. His homeland was soon conquered by the great ruler Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni. Rather than resisting, Biruni was taken into the royal court, where his brilliance was quickly recognized. One of the turning points in Biruni's life came when he accompanied Mahmud Ghaznavi during his campaigns in the Indian subcontinent. For nearly 20 years, Al-Biruni lived among Indian scholars, priests, and philosophers. He immersed himself in Sanskrit, studied Hindu scriptures, and learned mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy directly from Indian pandits. He respected Indian culture deeply, once writing, to seek truth, one must study other civilizations without arrogance, without bias, and without prejudice. His observations were recorded in his monumental book, Kitab al-Hind, or The Book of India. This encyclopedia provided a detailed account of India's religion, science, customs, and geography. He even translated Sanskrit works like the Sankhya and Yoga Sutras of Patanjali into Arabic, bridging two great civilizations. Centuries later, historians like Abul Fazl, the author of ain e akbari relied heavily on Biruni's accounts. Al-Biruni was not just a historian, he was a true scientist ahead of his time. In his famous book, Al-Kanun al-Masudi, dedicated to Sultan Mas'ud, he discussed astronomy, trigonometry, and planetary motion. He calculated latitudes and longitudes, with astonishing accuracy, and even proposed that the Earth rotated on its own axis centuries before Copernicus. In his work Al-Athar al-Baqiya, he examined the history of nations and compared calendars from different civilizations, all while discussing the possibility of Earth's movement in space. Al-Biruni also correctly measured the radius of the Earth using innovative methods, discovered that light travels faster than sound, explained natural springs and artesian wells using hydrostatic principles, studied minerals and stones determining the density of at least 18 different gems with remarkable precision, noted botanical patterns such as flowers having three, four, five, or six petals, but never seven or nine. His method was based not on blind belief, but on observation, experimentation, and mathematics principles that today define the scientific method. Al-Biruni's genius was not limited to one field. He wrote over 150 books and treatises covering astronomy and mathematics, Al-Kanun al-Masudi, Al-Tafhim, history and geography, Kitab al-Hind, Al-Athar al-Baqiya, medicine, Kitab al-Saidana, a major work on pharmacology, mineralogy, Kitab al-Jamahir, on gems and precious stones. In mathematics, he explored algebra, trigonometry, and even the concept of infinity. He devised methods for solving complex geometric problems that could not be solved with compass and ruler alone. In medicine, he combined Arabic and Indian knowledge to create an encyclopedia of healing practices. In history, he examined the rise and fall of civilizations, always with a critical, questioning spirit. Unlike many scholars of his time, Al-Biruni valued objectivity and tolerance. He argued that religion, science, and philosophy 
must be studied together to find truth. He once said, The phrase, Allah is all-knowing, does not justify ignorance. This was his way of reminding people that faith and reason must coexist, and that claiming God knows best should not prevent humans from seeking knowledge. His openness allowed him to compare Islamic thought with Indian philosophy, Greek science, and Persian traditions. He was, in every sense, a global thinker. Al-Biruni passed away in 1048 CE, at the age of 75, after a lifetime devoted to learning. But his influence never faded. His works inspired scholars across the Muslim world, Europe, and India. Historians often call him the founder of Indology for his deep studies of Indian culture. Scientists credit him as one of the earliest to apply experimental methods centuries before the European Renaissance. Even great minds like Ibn Sina, Avicenna, admired him as a contemporary, while modern historians compare him to figures like Galileo and Newton. Today, Al-Biruni is remembered not just as a Muslim scientist, but as a universal genius, a man who saw knowledge as the shared treasure of humanity. Al-Biruni's life is a reminder that the pursuit of knowledge requires curiosity, humility, and courage. He lived over a thousand years ago, yet his words and works still guide us today. When we read his books, we are not just reading history, we are connecting with a mind that was centuries ahead of its time. Truly, Abu Raihan al-Biruni was not only the pride of the Islamic Golden Age, but one of the greatest scientists the world has ever known. Knowledge is a light that belongs to all of humanity. Al-Biruni